One month later, in March 1989, Bob Lazar went one step further. He decided to take his friends to the desert and show them a flying disc test. I remembered most of the days and times of testing. So I believe it was eight or nine o'clock on a Wednesday night, somewhere in March, 89, I believe. We went out with Gene Huff, my ex-wife, and uh, John Lear. Shortly after the flight time that I had recorded, um, white light uh, came up off the ground and hovered and then be do, uh, began doing radical step maneuvers and darting from one side of the sky to the other, doing, doing some impossible flight characteristics. But at times the craft had you know, glowed tremendously bright where we thought, uh, being miles and miles away, we thought there was something wrong and the craft was going to explode so much so that we all got behind the car. It actually came closer. It came down the mountain range toward us to where we could actually see it was elliptically shaped. Uh, it looked like something that, eh, it, it's, it's strange to explain, it looks like an explosion that starts to explode and stops and doesn't explode and dissipate. That's how bright the light is. Your brain interprets it as an explosion about to happen. On his third visit with his friends to observe the discs at night, Bob Lazar was arrested. He was taken to an unknown location for interrogation and never returned to Area 51. They threatened my wife. They threatened to kill my wife. They said they'd stop at nothing. They said they thought they made that very clear. They couldn't believe that I had taken anyone out there to show them that, much less left with information like the uh, flight test data and uh, wanted to know what else I had said, who else I had told specifically. Security agents from the OFI, the Office of Federal Investigation, had been witnessed doing random security checks at his house. Uh, there was almost no question in anyone's mind, anyone in, in Bob's immediate life who, who talked with him on the telephone that his phone was tapped. I mean, strange things would happen on Bob's phone and really continue to this day. Dennis Mariani, who was my supervisor, called and you know, all he said was, do you have any idea what we're going to do to you now? And that was the end of the phone call. They were, uh, they were crazy. They really were. They were completely out of control. When you go to work...